Hey folks, this is the big day. Johnny Turbo's running. We got him on the dyno. They won't tell me what it's gonna read either. So we're all gonna find out together. I'm getting really excited about this now. Let's get started. Hey, we really wanna give a shout out to B&J Service Center and Clayton here. They've given us our time and uh, we really appreciate it. They've, they've loaned us this dyno. This is not a part of Area Diesel. They're just good neighbors. And uh, so Clayton, we really appreciate it. Yep, anytime. Now, my question is, are we gonna tear this thing up? We you might. Know, it's pretty powerful. It'll make or break it. Okay. <laughs> let's see it go. Ah, but before we show you, let's talk about some of the details. Vaughn, it might be a good time for you to kind of walk through, how does a turbo work? Well, a turbo is just an exhaust-driven air compressor. That's okay. really all it is. And by being the exhaust-driven, um, we're sitting on the manifold through a pedestal. I like your pointer there. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> it's better than a stick. <laughs> um, so as the exhaust travels up into the exhaust housing, it rotates the turbine wheel that's housed in this housing. Okay. Okay, so the compressor wheel is connected to the turbine wheel by a common shaft. So what the compressor wheel is doing is drawing air in from the air cleaner okay. through this tube coming into the compressor inlet. Uh -huh. And then as it's spinning, it's compressing that air and in this compressor housing and coming over here and blowing it into the intake manifold. So the objective of the whole thing is to put uh, a little higher pressure, a little air pressure in the intake side. Into the engine, yep. And we can control the speed relatively closely of these of the rotor group, the turbine and the compressor wheel by the wastegate actuator okay. through this linkage to a wastegate flapper that's in here. The purpose of the wastegate is to maintain the speed of the, the rotor so it doesn't go into what they call overspeed and shakes itself to death. But by being able to adjust this, we can also help save the heart, the motor, um, by not over boosting the engine. So we can run this particular actuator, I think down to about three pounds or adjust it up to about 14 pounds. Mm -hmm. So all we have to do is crack this flapper that's down in here off its seat to bypass the exhaust from going into the turbine wheel. Okay. So by bypassing that exhaust, it comes in this common cavity that's back in here and out the exhaust pipe. So we have set this on the bench at about five pounds of pressure. Um, but that's only static on the bench. And so you also have exhaust pressure that's on the back side of that flapper that's on its seat in there. So you always will pop that off a little bit lower pressure than you're getting on the bench because you don't have the yeah. um, exhaust pressure in there helping it. Right now this thing's running about five to eight pounds depending upon the load on it. Okay. Um, and it doesn't take hardly anything in movement. I mean, we're talking probably less than 30 thousandths of movement off its seat to give it enough of a crack to waste that exhaust off so that it doesn't go through the turbine wheel so we don't overspeed it or overboost the engine. Okay. So about somewhere between five and eight PSI is what we're going to see. When is it going to be the eight and when is it going to be the five? Well, of course, when it's under a load and working hard, that's when you're going to see it build its eight pounds of boost, or it may override that slightly too. But um, the five pounds of boost is mild load. Um, like you could see it there earlier, sitting there running without a load on the engine, the gauge isn't moving. You put a little bit of throttle in it, or you put a little bit of load on it, and it'll bump the boost pressure up. Fascinating. Ready? Yeah, this will only do 600 horses, right? For 250, uh, I don't know. 500 on the high scale. So. Okay, well, I guess it'll probably handle it then. Well, there's stock. Boy, listen at her belt. Okay, you're, you're right about 32 horse right there. 32 horsepower. Now that's like a about 60% increase, isn't it? Wow. 
that's a huge increase. 32 horsepower. I, I don't think I could ask for any more than that. And it sounds good too. Yeah, it, it sounds it, real good. Now he's checking the exhaust temperature. We said we were going to get a pyrometer on it, a, a, a gauge to measure the exhaust temperature. What he has seen so far is that the exhaust temperature doesn't get hot enough to even worry about it. So we'll see how that goes here after a few minutes. Also got a boost gauge here. Let's see what it reads. water temperature is about normal. That's about normal. That's when it finally gets up. A lot of times it has trouble getting up there, but when it when it finally gets up there is when the uh, thermostat finally kicks in. Okay, so the verdict is in. 32 horsepower. We can hear the whistle. Now on the exhaust temperature, I didn't get that on camera. What did you what did you see there? Maybe 750 max? Yeah, at the manifold. There was one spot that showed 900, which I don't know if that was an erroneous reading or not, but um, so the, the down pipe's always gonna be cooler and it was running about 150 to 200 degrees cooler than the exhaust housing on the turbine housing. Okay. And that was ranging in the 650, 525, just depends on where he's at. And pulling it down lower than rated on there is obviously gonna drive the heat up on it too. Uh, are you comfortable with those figures? that exhaust temperature yes um yes i am okay that's fine okay what what would you be looking for to be out of range oh 1500 is going to melt no <laughs> i wouldn't want to see like like he said you're going to have probably 200 degrees of temperature differential between the exhaust in and exhaust out uh -huh. so that's about what he's picking up he had 150 degrees depending on where you were checking it at um, i don't like to see more than a thousand degrees now this is the guy you need to listen to. This is the true area diesel expert. Oh, don't do that to me. He's also <laughs> Vaughn's dad. <laughs> That's the only thing I'll admit to. Oh, okay. <laughs> we really, I mean, we can see the 32 horsepower on the dyno. Um, I think over the next months, we'll try to figure out what does it mean? I mean, do we really notice a difference? I think Vaughn and I and some of the other guys that have driven this tractor feel like that when you uh, first press the hydrostat pedal, uh, you don't see this, this lag in RPM, this drop in RPM right at, the, right at the middle. Well, that's not really pulling anything. I mean, it's an empty tractor. Uh, but you do detect uh, that the RPM stays up. And uh, we did a little bit of a race with them. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know that we proved anything. No, I don't think we did either. <laughs> I was in loose gravel and you know, it was oh, muddy. Yeah, and... yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah. yeah. He, he's, got the, he's got the excuses down. In, in reality, it's gonna be hard to tell. And, and you know, there were some, some questions about would it change the max travel speed? No, it's not gonna change the, the travel speeds, low or high, that's, that's not gonna change at all. It's gonna be the amount of torque uh, that we have. And, and I think that's gonna, that's going to be a question we're going to try to answer. We've got maybe some ways we can do some pull tests. You've seen our dead pull test where we just use the, the scale that we pull. We may try that in a later episode just to see how this works. But uh, I'd like to see you try your loader on it. And when you get into that pile of dirt, instead of coming again in a stall, that it spins all four wheels. You'd actually like to see it spin the wheels. So yeah. now, it's a little question we've had off camera is whether it will spin the wheels uh, or whether the hydrostatic transmission will uh, continue to just, uh, you know, uh, give, up. give the, the relief pressure, but the hydrostatic itself will stall out. I, I don't know. Um, what we had noticed before is that the engine RPM would decline and the hydrostatic transmission would uh, go into pressure relief at about the same time. And so Val is thinking maybe that the engine RPM won't decline now, that the hydrostat will be forced to do a little bit more before it gives up. Mm -hmm. So. Well, let's address the um, kit project for this Okay. Thing. Are we going to have a kit? I mean, we get all kinds of people asking for a kit. I mean, this has yeah. generated a lot of excitement, which is cool. Yeah, we talked about this um, as a one-off project, and now I've moved into thinking about a kit for this. Um, 
But what we think we need to do on this is it needs to have some seat time. It needs to be worked. It needs to have several months of testing it. Uh, see what breaks. See what's good. You know. See what modifications we need to make. There's no need of making a kit right off the bat where we don't know if it's going to fail or right. whatever. So uh, let's don't throw the kit thing off the table, but let's postpone it or kick the can down the road several months to see how you get along with it in your real life scenarios. You know, the dyno's one thing, but it really matters what it's doing with your implements and backhoes and things like that that you're running with it. So let's uh, let's address that next year. That sounds good. I mean, we, we really don't know what it's gonna behave, um, say a, a two to three hour mowing job, uh, longer longer times or, you know, where we stress at tilling. Uh, we, sometimes when we're tilling sod, it it, it takes all the little 1025 R's got, even with a four foot tiller. and. Um, so it'll be interesting to see if we if we push a little bit. I think I think what you're telling me is, and it gives me a little bit of comfort, that you don't expect that we're going to be putting too much on the engine itself. I mean, you can't tell much about the whole powertrain, but you don't think we've put too much stress on the engine with what we're doing. Correct. At least yep. in theory. Myself, I think the biggest thing that that you you and your customers could possibly see is when you're putting it to work, like with your tiller you're talking about on it, when you got your loader. When you go with your backhoe and you don't run against all those stalls that you're running into, because you're telling me the engine's pulling down. Well, the engine, when it pulls down, your pressure goes down, your flow goes down. Well, if that engine stays up there, you're going to have more digging power, you're going to have more pushing power to load your bucket. A lot of our viewers have been asking, well, why would you do this? Why would you do this, Tim? And um, to be honest, uh, it's because we can. I mean, that really is it. Because I want to. Yeah, because I want to. And <coughs> things like this are, are fascinating to a lot of people, but uh, we happen to be in the uh, position where we can do it, and we can do it quite visibly for everybody to enjoy. Um, so it's just something that you guys have helped us invest in. Uh, and on that point, Area Diesel Service, we're just so thankful for what they've done. Um, there is no money out of our pockets. You guys have, have done all this for us and uh, quite frankly proven um, just how capable you are. I, I had no idea when we, when we first talked to, talked to you about this. Wow, it's amazing. But um, so what we've done here is just to kind of allow everybody to play along with this and we're gonna continue to do so. And of course, when it breaks, I'll uh, bring it back over here in pieces and uh, and let you, let you fix it. Bring it on. Perfect. <laughs> <laughs> that one might cost you more. <laughs> eh, I get it. I get it. I get it. I understand. And, and that's, that's fine. We, we know that this is not a warrantied item, not from you only, but from Deere. We know that we avoided uh, any powertrain warranty on the tractor. We're well aware of that, and um, this is just for fun. And we're willing to take that risk, and, and it's... Some, sometimes you just do things that, well, they may not necessarily make a lot of sense, but you just do them because they're fun. Absolutely, and not many people can say that they have one of these. That's right. You're one of those people now. That's right. And you got bigger tractors for bigger jobs. This is a toy. <laughs> <laughs> guys, this has been absolutely incredible. Watching you guys put this together, uh, and your team. I mean, I realize it wasn't just right. you guys. But watching you guys, your entire team work together to, to put this together was fabulous. I wish I could have been here. I could have harassed you a lot more, and I could have actually gave, what you doing, what you doing, what you doing on we all these We might not have parts. gotten anything done. You did that enough. Uh-oh. <laughs> <laughs> and when I told you Christmas, I didn't tell you which year for Christmas hey, either. Hey, you may not be seeing this right before Christmas, but it had a bow on it. Uh, when they first presented it to Get us. I think I think Katril may be able to find it for us. Look at that. There it is. Uh -oh. Right there. <laughs> I really appreciate it. Vaughn, thanks. It's been a fun project. And then, right. Val, I want to thank you as well. I really appreciate it. You, you guys honestly seemed like you had fun on this project. We did have fun. It's nice working with people in a different project than the normal daily stuff. Yeah. It's good to work with our friends and neighbors and customers and um, throughout, uh, you know, here at the dyno as well as a PJ at the exhaust shop. And um, it's just good to know people around town and so you can get things done and, and uh, work together to make it come yeah, together. It is a little bit different. What, what I detected here through this whole project was that 
uh, you guys, first number one, you know fuel systems, you know fuel pumps, you know turbos, um, but there's a step be above that, right? I mean, you know how to machine parts, you know how to, to, to design it, You're, you, you know how to handle the heat. There, there's just so many skills that when you watch our earlier videos, just we kind of gloss over, we don't really, but, but I mean, the, the amount of skill that it's taken uh, just to do this project, let alone, I mean, we're going through a plant that has you know a hundred turbos sitting here and then one spot and then there's a there's a whole uh, a pallet full of, of fuel pumps sitting here and then right beside it a, another pallet full of fuel pumps that have all been redone it's just it's stunning the volume you guys do are you going to show the people this thing or are you just going to talk about it yeah okay <laughs> hey thanks for watching everybody we'll see you next time on tractor time with bond bow and tim, tim. <laughs> <laughs> but when the set time had fully come, God sent his son, born of a woman, born under the law, to redeem those under the law that we might receive adoption to sonship. <laughs>